Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're looking at how you would create lines inside patterns in Illustrator. So these are sort of lines that you might have as roadways or paths or something that's sort of snaking through your pattern and actually creating these is a little bit tricky. So that's what we're going to be looking at. Now I'm using some vector houses that I downloaded from VecDeasy. They're this little set of houses. I like this in particular because they come in a collection that includes some AI files. So here is the download and I'll give you the link. But you're going to find plenty of vector houses or things that you could use for your pattern on VecDeasy. So just go and download something that you can use because the purpose of this video is really to have a look at how we do the roads, not necessarily what we're actually going to put on them. But that's important too. So let's start with a new file. I'm going to choose File and New. I'm just going to create a document that's 1000 by 1000 pixels in size and I'll click Create. Now at this point you might be tempted to get started on your pattern but you need to do a little bit of pre-planning. So let's switch across to Photoshop here where I have a sketch that we're going to look at. So this is the sketch of my roads. So what I did was I drew a square roughly on a sheet of paper with a black pen and then I drew out what my lines are going to look like. And what I was concerned about was to make sure that any line that came in at this side also had a corresponding line at this side because later on we're going to join this one and this one together. So a line crossed the border of my box here and so down the bottom we have to have another line crossing the border of the box. And here we have a line that's intersecting, crossing the border of the box and here is the companion line. So you don't want to necessarily go straight across and straight down. You can wiggle your lines. You just need to make sure that when some line enters the box at this point, another line is going to exit it. So I strongly recommend that you do this on a piece of paper and you do it until you're happy with the look of your lines because then you're going to take this to Illustrator and you're going to recreate this inside Illustrator. So I'm going to close Photoshop down and we'll return to Illustrator. So I'm back inside my Illustrator document and I have a mini version of my plan over here on the side. Now you would have the sheet of paper in front of you. I'm just putting this one here so that you can see what I'm doing. So we're going to start with putting some guides in place. I'm going to put these lines in as guides. So I'm going to first show my rulers with view and then rulers show rulers because this allows me to drag in my guides. So I want a guide that is sort of around this point. So I'm just going to drag it down. So there's the guide for this line here. I'm going to use the artboard here for my square. So this is the guide now for this part here. So I need a guide down here. So I'm going to drag this one in as well. And then I need a guide for this bottom piece. So that's pretty much going to give me the guidelines that I need to actually work out where everything is going to be positioned. Now guides move around, they're just lines in Illustrator. So I'm coming over here to the Layers panel and I'm just going to lock down all my guides. So I'm just going to click in each one of these in turn so they can't move. I'm also going to click and just lock down this image to just make life a little bit easier. Now I'm going to the pencil tool because I want to draw my lines with the pencil tool. I double click on it. One of the important things to deselect is keep selected because I don't want to keep my line selected. I want to just finish off a line. So I'll just click OK. I'll also just wind down my smoothness because I don't want it to be perfectly smooth. Now I'm going to come here and choose a color to work in. Right now that's going to be black. So the first of my lines is going to come in over here and it's going to exit down here. So that's the first of my lines. This next one is going to come in over here and exit up over here. Now if you don't like the line you've drawn, just press Control or Command Z and draw it in again. And I did not like that line at all. And then the final line is this one. It comes in at the top here and exits out over here. Now that I've got my lines in place, I'm ready to go ahead and to start making my pattern. Now I don't want my guides any longer so I can unlock those and I can select every one of them by just clicking on the little icon here. I'm going to shift click on the little icons for all of my guides and I'm just going to press delete. I'm going to select all of my lines so I'll just drag over the lines to select them. 
and I'll choose Object, Pattern, Make. Now things are really difficult to say at this point because everything's sort of on the very edge. So I'm going to choose View and I'm going to choose Hide Artboards. That just makes life a little bit easier. So what I need to do is to work out what's going on here. So let me just shrink it up so that we can see. So these are going to be the lines in my pattern. Now I'm not really fancying them that much, but you know what we're here to do is just to work out how we're going to do this, not create a perfect pattern. So in reality, I would probably redraw this particular line, but let's just go and see how we're going to fix these up. So for our pattern, what we need to do, I'm just turning off my tile edge, is we need to join these pieces together. So I'm going to zoom into this area here because this is one of the areas that I need to join these two lines together. Now, potentially some of these lines may not be able to be selected. This one can be selected. So I'm just going to select on the bottom most anchor point. You only want to move one anchor point and I'm just going to move it into position so that it joins up with this line here. You may find that deselecting this option of aligning art to the pixel grid will make life a little bit easier. So I'm pretty happy with that because I'm going to thicken up my line. I think it's going to work reasonably well. If you need to, you might want to just adjust it a little bit more. But you do want a good join between these two lines. Control or Command 0 to zoom back out. This is an area that we need to work on. This line is selectable here, but this line is not selectable. So I'm going to zoom into this area to work on this join. Use the white arrow, the direct selection tool. Click on the end anchor point, move it up into position, and then just adjust it so you have a smooth join. And you will want to join these up unless you're using dashed lines actually joining these up is going to be pretty imperative. Otherwise, you're going to have things going wrong in your design. This is the other point that we need to fix. So I'm just working out which line is selectable. Neither of those lines was selectable. This one is selectable. So this is the point at which I can change the join. If you need to, you can click Show Tile Edge and that will show you where your lines are, the lines that you can actually select and where the ones are that you can't select. I'm just going to zoom into this place. This line is going to be a little bit easier probably to join up. Again, zooming in just to make sure that I do have that join. And you will probably need to switch between the direct selection tool and the zoom tool to get these to line up really neatly. So let's show our tile edge and let's just see if we've got everything as nice as it can be. That joins pretty good. And that one looks pretty good too. So if you're happy with those lines and you've got the basis for your pattern, I'm going to apply a brush to this. So I'm going to select these internal lines and I'm going to the brushes panel. I'm going to click on the bottom link down here and I'm going to choose borders and then border lines because that will give me access to some lines that I can use. So I think I'll use this one here, but I want to change its color later on. I'm not particularly worried about that right now. I just want a line that is going to work for my design. So right now I've got my lines in place, but I don't have my houses. So let's go back to the houses and we're going to select them. You would want to make sure that you look in the layers panel to see what you've actually got here. But I've already had a look and what I've got is that each one of these groups is a house. So the person who designed this designed it really, really well. It's an excellent sort of little icon set here. So with the selection tool, I'm going to select over everything. Now everything is really big. I can read off here that it's over 1300 pixels in height. And I know my document's only a thousand. So I'm going to hold the shift key and rescale it before I actually go into my document. So this is much smaller now. I'll copy it with Control or Command C. I'll go back to my document and I'll press Control or Command V to paste it in. Now we're still working with these pattern options. So you'll see that the pattern is actually repeating, which is what it should do. So let's just zoom out. Next thing to do is to just go and place these houses where we want them to be. So I'm just going to move them around a little bit to wherever it makes sense. I can shift drag them to make them a little bit smaller if they're too big. I'm also going to make a row of these houses. So I'm going to alt drag some duplicates away. 
select over all of these. I want to make sure their bases are lined up. So I'll go up here to the align options, make sure it's aligned to selection. You can also get to that, of course, by choosing window and then align. I'm just going to make sure their bases are in alignment. And because they're in groups, I can also adjust their horizontal distribution. So I'll click that to make sure that they're nice and neat. So I think I'll swap these three with this one here. And of course you can go over the edge with your shapes, but when you're selecting, just make sure that you're only selecting the houses and that you're not affecting your lines. If you think that you're going to affect your lines, just come in here to the layers panel and lock your lines down because you spend so much time making sure they all join up, you don't want them to move. So let's just zoom out a little bit. The nice thing about this pattern options dialog is that you can zoom in and out. You can also increase the number of pattern elements that you're seeing. And I'm going to turn off my tile edge so I can see what my pattern looks like. So you can have a look at your design at this size. And if you think there are holes that need to be fixed, you can fix them. But you'll need to sh probably show the tile edge so you can work out where your design is. It's all the way up here. So these are the elements that can actually be moved. The others can't. So let's just turn that off again. I think I needed a little bit of a fix here. I'm also going to alt drag a second little house away so that I can duplicate my houses. It looks like I've got a guideline here. Yep, there it is. So I'm just going to turn it off for now. So I don't want to see that. So here we've got the lines going through our pattern. If you're happy with that, at this point, you can just click done. Now, those little elements that I bought in from Vecdeasy actually have some other elements inside them, which mean that they can't be used inside a pattern without being expanded. So I'm just going to click OK to expand them. So I'm left here with the original lines, none of which I need, and also my original little hand drawing. So I'm going to select all of these and delete them. Let's choose View and let's show our artboard back again. I'm going to add a rectangle to my artboard. That is the 1000 by 1000 pixels that my artboard was. Let me just flip the fill and stroke for a minute and let's position it over the artboard. If you want to make sure it's in position over the artboard, do that through the align panel. Make sure that this case you have aligned to artboard selected and then just center this shape on the artboard. Now with the shape over the artboard, let's fill it with our new pattern. So I'll just click up here. This is the pattern that we just created. I'm going to zoom in with Control or Command Zero. I'm also going to resize my pattern so I can see a little bit better how it's looking. I'll choose Object and Transform and Scale. Now I don't want to scale the 1000 by 1000 pixel box, so I'm going to disable Transform Objects but I do want to transform my pattern. And so this is it at 50%. I can take it down even a bit lower to say 35% and I'll click OK. Now, one of the residual issues I have is that I really don't want blue lines in my pattern. So I have my square selected that is filled with the pattern. I'm going up here to the Recolor Artwork dialog because that's going to give me the colors that are in use in this design. And here they are. And here's this blue color that I don't like. So what I can do is I can make the blue color any one of these other colors. So let's go and make it this red here. So I'm just going to drag my blue onto my red. And so now all what were blue lines are now red lines. And you could take it to another color if you wanted to. So let's just drop it up here. Now they're a darker red. I actually like that red. I think it looks better. So I'm just going to call that good and click OK. And what Illustrator's done is give me a second pattern. So this was the original pattern with the blue lines. This is the new pattern with the roadways that actually coincide in colors with the actual elements in this design set. Now, of course, you could recolor everything. Let's go and select the Recolor Artwork dialog here. Let's go into Edit. All these colors are now linked. I've just clicked this icon here to link the Harmony colors together. And if I drag this around, we're just going to recolor the whole piece of art, but this time with colors that are elsewhere on the color wheel. But the spatial relationship between the colors is still being maintained. Now, I really like this color scheme, so I'm going to click OK. 
and you'll see that now we've got another pattern added. So this was the original as I drew it. This is the recolored one with the red roads and this is a different colorway for this pattern this time with greens and blues. So I hope that this video has helped you understand how you can deal with linked lines, pathways, roads or whatever that are in your patterns in Illustrator and really pen and paper is the first place to start and from there you can just go to Illustrator, draw in your lines and then drop in the elements that you want to have as the rest of your design. I hope you've enjoyed this video and learned things about Illustrator of which you were previously unaware. If you did enjoy the video, please give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell, and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. Until next time, my name's Helen Bradley. Thank you so much for joining me here on my YouTube channel.